Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Ross Grace, and I have the privilege and honour to be the Executive Principal of Heathdale Christian College. Tonight, I'm joined to, uh, by Lynn Moffat, who is the Principal of our Primary at Werribee Campus. But also in the background, there's Daniel Lee, who is our Deputy Principal of Primary at Werribee Campus, who will help answer your questions. And along with Daniel, there's Kathy Ward, our Head of Learning Module for Kinder to Year Two, Joe Harworth, who is the head of learning modules for years three to six, as well as Anissa Croxon, who is our enrolment officer. And she will be taking you on a, and they're guiding you on your virtual tour a little bit later. As well as that, we've also got Azuba Reddy, who's our, our, our events and community coordinator, and she'll be assisting Anissa. And Mark Davey, who is our community engagement and development manager. So got a really fantastic team who are behind the screen, as well as those of us who are going to be in front of it. Though we're joining together from different homes around our city, I would like to begin by recognising the first custodians of the land on which Heathdale Christian College Werribee Campus stands, where we live, work and learn. We would like to acknowledge the Bunurong people of the tradition traditional custodians of the land on which our community is being built. And we give thanks to our almighty creator God for their care and stewardship of this land and pay our respects to their leaders, past, present and emerging, and for any Aboriginal people present with us this evening. We also pray for ongoing healing in damaged relationships between our Indigenous brothers and sisters, as well as all non-Indigenous Australians and seek God's work of reconciliation in all of our human relationships. Just before we begin, I just had a little question for you. Could, you. could I please ask you if you could let me know how you first heard about Heathdale, whether it was from somebody you knew or maybe you stumbled onto our website or you're in a, in the lo you live in the local area or you may even be a past student and, and how you know about your school. What I'd like you to do, if it's OK, is that you could pop your answers into the Q&A tab, which is a really good practice for a little bit later if you want to ask us any questions. So please let us know how you first heard about Heathdale. While you're doing that, I might just explain a little about what we'll be doing tonight. So tonight, we're going to is the start of the formal start, I suppose, of our journey with you. Along the way, we'll have many chances to connect and hopefully in the future in person, as well as these virtual or online times. You know, and I will begin our night by sharing with you about Heathdale's history and how we believe Heathdale's unique style of Christian education helps your child to develop their God given gift. Then next, Lynn will give a brief look at how this works practically through our educational and co-curricular programs. And following Lynn, Anissa will guide, take you all on a guided tour of our virtual guided tour of the primary spaces of the Werribee campus. And, and towards the end, Lynn and I will answer some of your questions and assist you to think and plan for your child's education. You know, we recognise that this is a very important decision uh, to make, and we can hope that we can bring some clarity and further information that can best help you to make this most important decision. So as we're speaking tonight, please, if you have any questions, just put them into the Q&A and uh, we'll do our best to answer them. Now, it may be sometimes Lynn or myself, or if not, the team who are behind the scenes will actually take the time to answer your questions. At the end of the night, I'll work through some of the next steps with you regarding the enrolment process for 2023. Before we begin though, as is our tradition, when we gather as a school community, we always pray and ask the Lord's blessing on our families and students and our Heathdale Christian College community. 
So would you mind joining with me and giving me the honour to lead you in prayer this evening? Let's pray. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we can be together this day. And thank you for the people who are seeking out some interest in Heathdale Christian College. Father, we want to acknowledge that it is you who called us into being. It is you who leads us each and every day and you will lead us into the future. Father, as these families who are with us this evening need to hear the information, we just ask that they will hear it with clarity and this will help them to make the important decisions that they need to make about their child's future. So bless our time together. Bless each family who is present with us this evening. This we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I was just going to check the, to see the Q&A if anybody's putting in anything about Oh, it's good to see. All right. So there is some there folks there from who picked up about they've found us from the website and others, some past students. So welcome back to Heathdale, as I need to say to you. And for others, oh, it's good to see that you're chatting to your friends and uh, finding out through some friendships. And that's not uh, untypical of where we're at. And so we would uh, be in a, as a school community. So welcome. Welcome them for, with us tonight. So as we move into this evening, let's start by sharing a brief history and the reasons why we are a college. This will give you some insights into our Christian ethos, which continues to underpin all that we do the very day in our, and also in our day-to-day -day operations. As I move into this space though, firstly, I'd love to play for you a short video about our college's history and its original founder, founder, Pastor Joe Westlake. Have a look at this clip. On the very fringe of Papa's Crossing, the land Reverend Joe Westlake had pegged out for a new Christian school was sparse. Heats Road was still a dirt track. Reverend Joe knew he was called to provide a school focused on providing Christian education in the West. Reverend Joe recalled, there were many difficulties, but our problems were God's opportunities. Two weeks before school began, the school site was still bare, but God had been faithful and will continue to be. Car parks were pegged out, portables located, furniture moved in, power lines connected, trenches dug, it was all hands on deck. We stepped out in faith and moved into the school. God has continued to be faithful ever since. Some 37 years later, Reverend Joe could never have imagined what God had in store for the area all for our Werribee and Melton communities, but nor would he have been surprised. In the words of the Reverend, if the original vision was of God, it is unlikely that he will change it, although he may expound it. He is, after all, the sovereign created God, but he continually works for good with those who love and trust him. My prayer is that he who brought the college into existence may continue to guard it and guide it into a future enhanced for his glory. I hope
hope you enjoyed that. Just gave you a little insight. You know, the college has grown considerably from those 37 students that Heathdale started with just on 39 years ago. See, today we've grown to a community of almost 1,800 students across two campuses at Werribee and Melton, with kindergarten to year 12 students here at Werribee. As you just heard, our founding family's key desire for Heathdale Christian College was that they wanted their children to learn within a context that openly acknowledges God is intrinsic to all aspects of life. This tradition continues to this day and is a the strong umbrella that links both of our campuses. See, our teachers see the students before them as a gift, firstly to the parents and their families from God, that this young person who requires training and helping and shaping and forming from their educational, emotional, social, physical, intellectual and spiritual perspective. The whole child is a unique and one-off person and each child must be supported and nurtured as we aim to demonstrate that this in the core of our programs that we offer and through our subjects and our morning devotions and our staff who work with each such as teachers and then our pastoral carers, our learning enhancement team and those who work alongside our staff and students. You know, I believe it's this multifaceted approach that forms our distinctive from other schools in this region. And it's this distinctive is driven by one of our key foundation theological beliefs that God has called you, you the parents and the guardians, to raise your children within the context of your own family unit. See, the staff and I do not want to undermine the God-given authority of parents. Rather, we desire to partner with you to educate, support and assist them to reach their own God-given potential as you raise your children. You know, and we hope to do this by providing high quality, deep and rich learning experiences, as well as speaking to these young lives to help them to discover and develop their gifts and talents and to develop their individual character. So you've heard enough from me. I'm going to hand it over to Lynn now, who will give you a brief picture of how it looks like in the classroom. Hey, Lynn, over to you. Thank you, Ross. Well, indeed, it is a pleasure to serve our families here at Heathdale. And I do have the privilege of guiding our wonderful staff who care deeply about all our young students who journey with us. This does begin right at the kindergarten, where our play-based four-year-old kindergarten program fosters curiosity by exploring God's creation around us. We also help to develop a sense of belonging by practicing being a good contributor to a group through learning to listen to instructions, make new friends, to share, to be honest and have fun together. In our prep classrooms, teachers model learning and inquiry. Students are helped to work alongside others to communicate effectively and explore new ideas and concepts. Practicing important skills and rehearsing learning occurs to build student understanding and students are often directed to try new things and to take educational risks as they learn. Our students often surprise us and go beyond what we had expected. Each morning, students are greeted by their teachers and settle into a time of prayer and Bible reading. They sing or they encourage one another. It is here that students are helped to think about the God of the Bible, Jesus, who came to earth to show us how to live. It is through discovery and asking questions that students can see godly principles and therefore develop character. Through reading the Bible, they read stories and they see that in those stories, there are characters just like them. And through life experiences, they learn about the place they have in the world to help and to pray for and to serve others, 
It is such a delight to see students who care by helping one another. And this happens throughout our school from the very youngest to the oldest in our senior students. Many of our students in senior school are often involved in the primary student school life. Our middle year three and four primary students begin to be involved in sport competitions, choirs and musical groups, while our older primary students also have an opportunity to apply for a leadership position as primary captains and house captains. These students learn that being a leader isn't just the person who stands out and commands others, but each can serve and lead in ways that encourage others to reach their own personal goals also. If there is anything we do consistently across our school, it is to help students become confident learners, showing independent thinking and an ability to question and learn in a caring and supportive community. Every student will hear the message that God loves each and every one of them and wants the very best for them as they make positive choices in their life. To me, these kinds of conversations are at the very heart of what we call the Heathdale experience. I'll hand over to Anissa now, who will guide you all through our virtual tour of the primary spaces at Werribee. And as we go, don't hesitate to put any questions questions into the chat as you think of them. Thanks, Anissa. Thanks, Lynn, and welcome everybody. I'm sorry I can't do this in person with you, but I look forward to hopefully doing that in the future. Um, so hopefully this guided tour uh, that we're doing virtually will give you an indication of what our school is like and give you um, and just a bit of an excitement to when you're actually allowed to come on site. So we're going to begin the tour in our four year old kinder rooms. Uh, we have a strict sign in and sign out system as safety is very paramount to us. We have two large kinder rooms with offices and a kitchen space, which um, is very self contained. Here, our team of professional and dedicated staff serve our families and children, and it is the first step into our college. A warm welcome is given to all in the kinder foyer with some reading books you can see there in the corner. Inside the rooms on arrival, children place their bags into their allocated spot, are welcomed and quickly begin engaging in various activities of interest to them. In the rooms, you will often see students engage in age appropriate discovery, creating art, building, reading, doing craft, uh, performing team activities, uh, engaging in active learning and music is also a part of our kinder program. Our students start each day reading a Bible story and praying together, and the rest of the day is interlaced with both group and individual activities that are of interest to them. These activities are designed to increase their participation, language and numeracy skills and peer friendships. Our interactive programs help students to grow and develop their language skills, pose questions, inquire and discover. Our teachers and co-educators are very purposeful about finding out what interests our students and tailoring the program to meet these interests. For example, a couple of months ago, a slice exploration corner was set up at some point, and we have also seen teddy bear hospitals, a cafe, uh, a shop, uh, a doctor's surgery, and also dinosaurs set up in the, all these spaces, and these help the child to um, learn this interest-based discovery space. And you'll see in these outside areas, we have spaces to develop their, both their phone, fine and gross motor skills, and students spend a good time outside each day, of course, weather permitting. We have just under 90 students that attend for 30 hours a fortnight. This is a standalone educational program, and there is no childcare attached with our kinder. Hours are approximately 8.30 a.m. till 3.30 p.m. each day, depending on the group a student may be allocated to. Our kinder and prep areas are combined in one precinct of the college. This makes not only the transition seamless, but also allows students to take ownership of this space. At Werribee, we have seven classes of prep with an aim to have a cap of 22 students per class. As you can see, we have areas for individual working at the tables and desks, as well as together and group work with the teachers. Something you may also notice is the computers. We don't have one-to-one one devices at primary level, but rather use 
the support of technology through iPads, computers, interactive whiteboards and individual devices as required. Our teachers are able to cater for a wide range of learning abilities in the classroom. Where additional support is needed, particularly for numeracy and literacy, or extension work is needed to further challenge students, the college has a team of, self, of staff in our learning enhancement team who work very closely with our primary classroom teachers to provide these additional programs and appropriate work to fit the needs for each child. In our prep space, we also have a lovely grassed area, which is where both our sport and PE classes are run. We also have two playgrounds in this area for our students, for those who love to slide and to climb, as well as a very, very large sand pit that quite often ends up with more sand in a student's shoe than in the sand pit. Next, we're heading to our classroom areas in our primary space. Uh, what you'll see here is our grade one classrooms. We have two classrooms interconnected with a space in between where we do daily reading and from prep through to these early years, we focus on both numeracy and literacy, which are the core foundational educational blocks. We teach phonics to the students, which are the sounds that letters make. But don't worry, we run sessions to teach you as parents too, so you can help your child at home as they learn to read. Parent partnership is an essential part of our style of education because when the school and the parents are on the same page, it is then that the child achieves the best outcomes. Each morning begins with devotion time in their homeroom and then in the lower primary students will then study ICT, PE, sport, science, numeracy, literacy, HAS, which includes history, science and geography, French, library, and Christian life studies. Our art rooms are separate purpose-built rooms which year one to year six students use. They experiment with different mediums within these art lessons which are taught by a specialist art teacher. Drawing, crayons, charcoal, pencils, painting, watercolour, oils, textiles, paper mache and so much more is in this space and you can see there's an example of students artwork on the walls, we love to display our students' artwork and they love seeing it as displayed as well. Music is a specialist subject in our curriculum and with a specialist teacher, they learn to read music, sing together, play the recorder, and as these skills develop, also enjoy various other instruments. If your child is particularly interested in music, we also have a private music lesson uh, program available and these lessons occur during school hours and include things like piano, trumpet, flute, violin, guitar and drums. These are available both through primary and secondary years and students also have the opportunity to join a choir or an instrumental group. We have separate areas within the resource centre for age appropriate books and settings. This is our primary space where our children love to choose books which ignite their imagination. We try to nurture a love of reading in every year level with our students learning how to choose a good book that they will enjoy and one that will ignite their interest. This has been recently refurbished, so there's lots of comfy spaces that you can see there for children to curl up with a good book and enjoy the space that's here. Of course, for most students, one of the most um, spaces that they ask is recess or lunchtime. So we have a number of outdoor play spaces for our primary students. This includes the AstroTurf, a large grassed oval, some outdoor basketball courts, numerous sand pits and multiple playgrounds. There are suggested zoned areas for year levels so our students can play freely while considering others. Primary uh, student captains are highly visible and are positive role models to students whilst outside. So this is one of the views of our playground, lots of different climbing equipment that they can be involved in. So this brings to a close the primary tour section um, we're quite intentional in the use of our space and using it appropriately so that we keep that small school feeling where each child is known. I'm going to ask Azuba to put our college map up for you. And as you can see, our primary and our secondary areas are quite separate. So our secondary area is towards the back of the school campus and our primary area is towards the front. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, crossover, such as in the resource centre or the canteen. 
and our early learning centre precinct, which is the kinder and prep area, is down towards the bottom left hand corner of the college. The virtual tour we've just done today would usually happen during a school day or on a visitor's day and you would even then get the pleasure of having one of our student leaders show you around. Um, we hope to be able to do this in person for you soon um, and I look to meeting many of you then. But for now, this brings a close our virtual tour and I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to show you around our college. I'm going to hand back to Ross and Lynn now who will answer some of your questions. So please remember to type them in the Q&A tab. Thanks, Anissa, for that. And uh, I'm, I hope that that gave you a little bit of a, fur, a further insight into the college. And also, thanks for those who have already started to put some questions into the chat section. And if so, if you've got any questions, please, while we're actually going to go into a time of answer, some questions now. If you've got a particular question that's been raised because of the tour or something that either Lynn or I have said this evening, please put it in the chat because Lynn and I would love to try and answer those questions or if not, the team who are behind the scenes will definitely make sure that your question's asked. Hey Lynn, I just looked at the, one of the first questions that's come in and uh, Anissa spoke about the, the use of technology and computers in the school. So one of the questions there says, do we, do we, and I'm presuming we meaning the parents as opposed to the college, but do we, the parents, have to provide the computers? So that's the first part. But the second part is, how, you know, how do, often do they use them in class? Wonderful question. In these days of much technology, it's something that we have grappled with as a school. We actually do not ask parents to provide computers. We have a bank of computers in classrooms. All of the children are able to access them under their teacher's direction. And those computers, iPads, technology, provides an opportunity for, for students to begin to learn how to use a computer, what it's for, the educational use of it, and how to use it safely. So yes, we do have computers in the classrooms and our teachers direct the learning. There's many, many activities that they do using a computer. And again, it's step by step, allowing the child to discover how to use it well. Mm. They're used in literacy, they're used in numeracy, and in fact, they're used in all sorts of areas in the educational program. Mm. So again, the teachers would be explaining to parents as they come along, just how they're used with their child in the rooms. And uh, as I said, there's, there's lots of different ways of using it that's going to be beneficial to our students. But we certainly keep a close eye on it. That's good. Thanks, Lynn. And I think the other thing is, of course, that uh, over the last two years, a lot of people have actually started to see how often students use the, these devices to assist their learning. And of, of course, through remote learning, that's been our main source of, of communication with it. But when the students are here at school and on campus learning, we adopt what we call a blended learning program, which actually recognises that sometimes the best thing to do is actually put the, uh, the device to the side or to turn it off because they actually need to be involved in another part of the style of learning. And so it's actually about using that device as, as a resource and, uh, and to actually facilitate and enrich and deepen their learning. So and you're right, that it's, there's that ebb and flow, isn't it, throughout the day of where the students will use those devices. So thank you so much for that question. Great question to start with. Hey, there's another one there, Lynn, and I reckon you're one than me, as it goes, do we provide any extracurricular activities for primary students, such as instrumental music, private music lessons, or even some sporting activities? Amanda Nisa said something there. Do you want to just unpack that a little bit more for us? Thank you, Ross. Yes, I will. We do have some excellent teachers in all of these areas that work with the children in the classrooms. Our, our younger students, all of our primary students, have a PE lesson every week. They have sport every week and they do a lot of outside activities as well. For music, they have a music lesson every week with our specialist music teacher. And as they get a little bit older, in about grade three up, they're able to join choirs, they're able to join ensembles, and certainly they're able to go into orchestras if their skills are developed well. We do have a private music program here, and the private music teachers work on our site. For the younger children, they pick up the children from their classroom and take them to their lesson and bring them back. So it's all very uh, carefully monitored and the children do an amazing job of learning those in individual uh, music items that Anissa did explain a little bit earlier. 
So lots of opportunities mm -hmm. for all different extracurricular cool. activities. In some ways, we probably need longer school days for all the things we like to do. Well, the other thing, every time I hear you talk about this, Lynn, it makes me think, Actually, it's time to be no longer be an executive principal. I want to be a student again. I want to get back into that classroom. And because I, I don't know about you, but my schooling days, and especially the primary years, had none of those opportunities mm. and, and some great opportunities that our students have. So mm. there, so thank you for doing that. Hey, here's a, here's a question that's close to my heart. And I love this one. Yeah, will there be opportunities for parents to volunteer and to join school events, you know, through or when you're on site in 2022? There's a short answer and the long answer. I'll give the short answer. <laughs> yes, please. Yes. But, yeah, but you give the longer oh, answer, okay, Lee? Absolutely. Look, we're really looking forward to partnering again on site with our parents in classrooms and around about the campus. Of course, we've had not quite that experience this year, but we are planning and we're open and we're waiting for that opportunity to arise next year. So yes, parents, we love the idea of you coming and volunteering for various activities in children's classrooms. We have a reading program. At times we have incursions and excursions. And again, there's a process for being able to apply for those and to be on site with us. But yes, definitely, we would love to have parent helpers. Yeah, I think one of the things, that, and this is what I love about Heathdale, uh, Lynn, is that sense of community. But it's yes, we are a learning community and we're here for our students, but the parents that are being part of that learning journey of their children is very much something that we want to share, celebrate uh, together, and so to be able to allow those opportunities as opposed to saying, no, mum and dad or Gadget, you need to stop at the gate. We'll now look after kids. No, it's it's that partnership, and I think Absolutely. that's a really uh, good thing. So thanks for for that. There's a, another question that's come in, and I think this is also, and I'll get you to speak to a little bit more to this one too, if you wouldn't mind, Lynn. But it talks about the extra supports that are available to students, with it, especially though with their additional learning needs. But I'm, I'm wondering if we should also just say there are the support things for those who need the support in their their, lead, their learning, as well as those who need some challenge in their learning. So, Absolutely. so what happens in the primary school? Yes, we love that every child comes as an individual and they have mm -hmm. different gifts and they have a different journey. The classroom teacher is responsible for ensuring that the children in her classroom are, or his classroom are going to be the ones that are going to really develop their skills at the right mm. pace and at the right time. So the classroom teacher will work with the learning enhancement teachers at times. There may be some assessments that occur so that we can find exactly where children are up to and what they need in their learning. The learning enhancement team, as I've mentioned, work with the classroom teachers. We also have learning assistants that will come into the classroom and just help guide perhaps a small group in the classroom, or perhaps some children will pop out for some activities as well. Again, the classroom teacher oversights all of those programs and we make sure that our children are always learning. And of course, we love to hear from parents too, because Parents, you give us great feedback about how your child is going. So there is a continual conversation between teaching staff and our staff here at Heathdale and parents to just make sure we've got the, the balance right and children are progressing. Hey, Lynn, that's actually a really good point. I'd like to pick that up for a second. We might just chat about that. You're right. The, the facts that the parents get to see their student, their children in a different light to what we are. And so it's where, when we actually share each stories from the, the teachers along with the, the parents, that's where we get a really full picture of understanding. And there sometimes there's, there's some of these kids who just hide their talents under a bushel. And, and it, but it's only when, you know, the parents might say, hey, do you realize this is what they do on the weekend? And the teacher will go, oh man, and that's a great opportunity. And I think that's where we, we rightly say the sense of, um, you know, don't hesitate to let us know anything like that. Is, is that something would you be experienced? Absolutely. Look, it is a conversation mm. and we hope those conversations continue right from kinder and I would think right through to year 12 yeah. because we do want to have that partnership with families. We want to make sure that we are constantly talking about progress and where the children are at. And I expect mm. too that sometimes parents might be very surprised at what we see their children doing at That's school true. as yeah. well. Yeah. 
so yes, it's a, it's a great privilege and it's one that we really hold dear, yeah. that we continue to have conversations and see our young children and our older children continue to thrive. And, and that's a really good point too, Lynn. You know, and, and what we often say to families, you know, don't hesitate to contact us because we won't be hesitant in contacting you. So, so this is that part of that openness and, and that sharing of that journey together because at the end of the day, both the, the, the family and, and the school, what we've got is the kid is the, at the centre there. They're the ones that we really want to be able to support and encourage. So, so thanks for that. Hey, um, there's a question about bus services. Now, you know, so what did, I mean, when I come out here in the morning and I see the cars coming into the into the, the car park, we know there's a lots of cars, but do some of the, the primary kids come to school by bus? Yes, they do. We have a number of buses that feed in from different areas into our college, and there's quite a process for that. Um, however, we do encourage our grade one up to use the bus. Mm. We're fairly cautious about our preppies going on the bus because we really want to make sure that those little people, when they come to us, are confident, they know where they need to be, the mm. teachers can have that conversation again with the parents about their travel. We need to know that when children are, are brought to school and certainly when they go home, we know exactly where they're going and how they're going to get there safely. So buses, yes, we do have them. There is a process. There are some particular bus routes that are worked out at the beginning of every year, depending on the clientele mm. and the people who want to use the bus services. Uh, but of course, we have a, a bus code of conduct and all those sorts of things where children can travel safely. But again, that's a conversation to have with us uh, when parents come and tell us mm. about that yeah. travel experience. No, that's good. And look, if they've got any questions, that's where either questions at Heathdale or even through enrolment, just bang a question in there or even on, on the chat right now. And, mm. and the, whether it's the team behind the scenes or someone else from the college, we'll get back to you and talk to you about some of those details about a bus service. Service. But if that's something that can really help uh, families out, where that's part of the service that uh, the college is, does provide. But I do need to identify that the cost of the bus is outside of your tuition fee. Mm -hmm. So, for example, before when we were talking about the, the access to devices and everything, that's not an additional cost to families. That's all built into, our, into your tuition fee. So, so there's no additional cost for things around the technology, but the things such as, for example, while we mentioned before the, uh, the music program, the bus, but there's also another question along that line is before and after school care. So, so the college has uh, has, a, has a partnership with a, a group that is the, that offers yeah. that service. We yeah. do, and boy, what do, do they have a lot of fun in that place. Yeah. Uh, we have a, pro a program called Big Child Care. They actually are on site mm. uh, and they run a program for primary age students. So from prep to year six, students can be booked into that. They can come at 6.30 in the morning if people are up that early and uh, ready to start their school day at 8.30 with us approximately. And in the afternoon, the younger children in preps and ones are collected from their classrooms by those staff from Big Child Care, taken to the program, and that's where they have their afternoon activities uh, there in Big Child Care. So it is a great, um, mm. a great service. Our children really enjoy it, but they also provide holiday care. Yep. So well, holidays, ask you about that. yes, yeah. and if we have student-free days at any time on campus, again, they run the program to make sure that they are helping us and helping parents uh, look after their children in a, in a great way. If, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong though, Lynn, my, my re recollection is that big childcare basically run for most of the school year and even uh, they're shut down for a short time over the Christmas New Year period, but basically uh, uh, there for, you know, what, 48, 49 weeks of the school year. So allowing, for, you know, the families who have, you know, with work leave and stuff like that, they can still use that holiday vocational care program as well as the before and after school care yes. program in the school days. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And in fact, some of our children just want to go and they could be home with their parents, but they love being there after school as well. So that's something just to think about. Actually, you've just prompted me. I remember speaking to the team from uh, Big Child Care one day and uh, they, they were telling me that there was three or four parents who got together 
and they organised a play date for their kids, but they did it using the you know, after school care program. And I thought, now that is creative because I reckon the mums and dads got, took themselves off to the local cafe and had a coffee while and they had a good time to chat while the kids also had a great time and a play together. So that's, but that's part of what we say is community life here at Heathdale. We want to build community as much as, and we recognise that our core is about learning. We are a learning community, but we are also a community of people and, and therefore we want to do life together as well. So that's good. Thank you. Hey, um, I, I did notice before there was another question, Lynn, and again, uh, Anissa spoke a little bit to me, so I might get you to just talk a little bit more about those leadership opportunities mm -hmm. in, in the primary school. Now, uh, Anissa spoke about a couple of the things in terms of the school captains and house captains, but um, maybe there's also stuff that happens even at a class level that would actually talk about student leadership. So what's some Absolutely. stuff that happens there? Thank you, Ross. That's a great question too. Because what we see in our, our younger students in particular, they come and they just want to grab everything, opportunity, every opportunity with their two hands and get in and just um, do what they can do in the classroom. So our teachers recognise this and they give them opportunities. Perhaps it's something simple like reading to the whole class or sharing stories. And right from the very beginning, we start to develop that confidence and that ability in our children to be able to participate with confidence. So then that obviously will grow right through all the primary years. And once the children get up to about year six, that is when they can start to apply for those leadership roles that we mentioned earlier. Mm. House captains, sport captains, um, music uh, assistants, those sorts of activities as well. But every step of the way, we're working to try and help our students really develop those lovely leadership opportunities yeah, where they good. can fulfill and work alongside others in really positive ways. So yes, it's lovely to see children stand up in an assembly, say a prayer, mm. or talk about some experiences they've had, and that's something we continue to encourage. Actually, you're right. You've just given me a little flashback, and and of course we're we're just moving back into this space now of more assemblies. But just seeing the confidence of some of our students present uh, at an assembly, and you know the first time, especially as a, as a, as the younger ones, they are even around a grade one, grade two looking a little bit timid and, and, and almost a little bit overawed. But by the time they're in five and six, talk about mm. confident, articulate people. Mm. And it's, you know, what a great life skill. And a great thing. So it's really good. But on top of that, one of the things I have also noticed, and, and, I, and I heard you speak about it before, and I wouldn't mind if you could just speak a little bit about this too. You talked about the senior school or the secondary school leadership kids coming down. So like our school captains coming down and doing some work in the primary school and again, even mm -hmm. at assembly. So th they act as great role models for absolutely. our primary students. So just can you just talk to us a little bit more about that? Yes, absolutely. Look, I think having a prep to year 12 or college and in fact, kinder to year 12 is mm. a great blessing because those older students never really leave our campus. They are there, we know them yeah. and they know us and they feel confident coming down and just being part of the primary school at times when their studies allow. Uh, and as Ross said, it's in assemblies, uh, it's just incidentally as well. And some of our older students come they might come to me and they say, I've got this activity, I'd love to run it, yeah. could we do it? Who could we in, be involved with in the primary school? And I just love that terrific independence yeah. and that confidence from our older students to come and be involved. So in some ways, they're more like big brother, big sisters. That's they're true. around us, they're role models, and our younger children often can tell us what the, the older children are up to too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, that's true. And I think one of the things around that is it's what is lovely, you're right. It's it's like big brother, big, brother, big sister. But I think... Uh, when I've been talking to the, say, for example, the, the school captains, one of the things that they talked about was when they were in the primary school and they saw the school captains come down, they went, you know what, when I get old enough, I want to be able to do the same. And and what a lovely legacy that has been mm. built over the time. Now, thanks for sharing on that part, Lynn. And I just noticed that the last question is actually a lovely segue into my final point that I wanted to talk to you about. And there were some que questions around the enrolment process. So what happens with the enrolment process is once you submit your application, this is reviewed by senior leaders in our college and for the application enrolment priority. 
and our enrolment priority gives an, an order uh, to the applications that we receive. Now, our enrolment priorities are available on our website for under our enrolment policy. And if there is a position available in the year level, we will then invite some families to in for an appointment to discuss your application. And this is your chance to discuss with us any additional queries you may have. See, because we recognise choosing a school is a big decision. We don't take it lightly and we know that you don't take it lightly. And so we want to give it as much time as it is requires. So after this conversation though, an offer may be made or an application can become whitelisted. So that's our process. So what's the next uh, for our enrolment timelines? For our 2023 enrolment year, we begin our first round of processes at the start of next year. So at the start of 2022, we hope to be able to run more in-person tours as the restrictions ease. So we'll be starting to notify families when they become available. And as I'm sure you can appreciate, our priority is ensuring that our current students get through this year with as little impact as possible on their learning. And so if you are considering for us a 2023, we would recommend to you that your application form is in before the end of this year to ensure that you are there ready to be part of the process of the first round process for 2023. Well, that's all that I have to, that I need to wanted to share with you tonight. I really just wanted to say again, thanks for joining us. And we've hoped that this has been a good start to the journey with us. You know, we will follow up this tour by sending out application packs to those of you who haven't already yet applied. But if you have and have any further questions, please, as I said before, don't hesitate to contact our enrolment team at enrol at heathdale.vic edu.au or fill out an inquiry form on our website. So thanks again. We hope that you will all stay safe and that the rest of this year will be good for you. And then that will lead to a really joyous and time of Christmas celebrations with you and your family and your loved ones. So thank you again for your time uh, with us. We've got our team who will stay online for the next 10 minutes or so. So if you've still got any questions, don't hesitate to ask a question in the chat. But otherwise, let me say to you, thank you again for uh, being with us. I hope this has been really helpful. Goodbye. Have a good evening.